Okay. We are going to just work with uh, proofs today and then two constructions. Remember, the only construction today on the quiz is going to be that which you saw last class, the parallel line. These notes uh, are not on the assessment today. But since we're doing proofs, I think it'll be good review for the proof that you have on the quiz today for us to just do some more since proofs are something brand new to you. So um, with the first proof, and with all of these, I'll give you a minute to read through the givens. If you have highlighters, I suggest using highlighters for proofs, or at least marking what's in the picture. But it's most important that you read through it yourself and kind of come up with a plan of how we're going to approach this and what we're going to do. Two, with a proof, remember your givens are always written first. We number each statement and each reason. We're only going to be using the statements and reasons that we've covered so far. So nothing's going to be brand new to you. And then this proof statement is the last statement. Okay, so take a minute to look through and mark what you've got and then come up with a plan. So if you're watching the video, pause it and then unpause it when you're ready to go over it. Okay, so if you take and highlight or mark um, angle one congruent to angle two, so angle one's formed by these two rays, okay, or those two lines. And then angle two is right here. So if you did extend and continued to trace the lines that form those angles, here are the two lines cut by a transversal. And if you're told that angle one is congruent to angle two, and that is one of our angle pairs, those are corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are congruent, when two lines cut by a transversal, um, then the lines are parallel. So we know now that line one is parallel to line two. So that's a statement we can conclude if those two angles are congruent. So line one is parallel to line two. Just like it is in your notes, it goes if two lines cut by a transversal, so it's important that we use the vocab form congruent corresponding angles. then they are parallel. Okay. So we have to number each statement and then number the reason that goes with it with the same number. The other given so each given should at some point, maybe not right away, but at some point it will allow you to conclude something. The other given is that angle three, which is formed by these two lines. I do a better job tracing that. And then angle four is formed by these two lines. Extending that out, we have two lines cut by this transversal. And if three is congruent to four, that's an alternate interior angle pair then the lines, if they're congruent, the lines are parallel. So now I know that line two is parallel to line three. You're going to write the same thing as above. So if you want to just look at your paper, the only thing we're going to replace is that corresponding angles with alternate interior. Yep. So you can just copy that down and make the substitution. So if two lines cut by a transversal, form congruent alternate interior angles, then they are parallel. And there's one last step. Some of you are running out of room. I apologize. I need to add more space. So this last step, again, if line one is parallel to line two and line two is parallel to line three, then we know now we're done. Line one is parallel to line three. So number four is our statement up here, line one parallel to line three. It's not substitution. We use substitution when we see a congruent symbol. 
because the substitution property says you can replace a figure or an angle or a line segment with its congruent angle or line segment. This is simply just, again from our notes, if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. All right, now I'm looking at number two. So number two, it tells us that angle ABD is a right angle and angle CBE is a right angle. So what do right angles give us? So we have right angles. So what can we conclude if we have right angles? Yeah, Carter? They are 90 degrees, but if I say they're 90 degrees in a proof, I'm essentially saying the same thing, right? Does that allow us to conclude anything else? And with proofs, we don't work in terms of measures, which a, a degree is a degree measure. It's always in terms of congruency. Um, right angles give us perpendicular lines. Okay, that's one option. And they also give us complements. Okay, so if I highlight angle A, B, D, I know that this angle right here and this angle right here are complementary. Okay, so I'm going to name them. A, B, C, and C, B, D. So angle A, B, C, and angle C, B, D are complementary. And then by the other right angle, which is C, B, E, I'll highlight that in pink, well, these two angles are also complementary. If they're complementary to this same angle, what must be true about the other angles? They're congruent, yeah. Because they're complementary means they add up to 90. And if this is the same number, say this was 60, this has to be 30 to add up to 90. That has to be 30. Then yeah, they're congruent. And then we're done with the proof. So it's just a matter of formalizing that or writing that up in terms of a proof. So I'm going to name those two angles um, EBD. And keep that angle CBD are complementary. And then, yes, we know that ABC and EBD are congruent, which is our given. And so, even though I wrote it EBD, that's the same as DBE, but I will write it as they have it written DBE. We just have to write up why that's true. Okay, so we can make sense of what's going on. Um, the reason why in step two that the angles are complementary is because any two angles that form a right angle are complementary. Okay, so two angles that form a right angle are complementary. And if I'm going to talk about those angles that are complementary, they are complements. So complements, lastly, complements of the same angle are congruent. They were both complementary to C, B, D. All right, last one on this page. It's also three steps, so it's nice and short. Take a look at what's given there and then what we're trying to prove. So in color, we've got PXR, so let's thicken my line, that's this angle here. This angle is congruent to QXS, so QXS, so they overlap right here. It's important to note the overlap. And what we're trying to prove 
is that PXQ, so this angle right here, is congruent to RXS, this angle right here. So we're going from this larger red angle to the smaller orange. How did we do that? And then we're going to go from this larger green angle to the smaller orange. What process or what operation are we going to do to those larger angles to get the smaller? Subtract. Okay. So what are we subtracting? We're subtracting this overlap. So we can lay out the subtraction property. So I'm going to subtract. So step two, that overlap, to name the angle, we can call it QXR or RXQ. I'll call it um, angle QXR. So if I subtract straight down, PXR minus QXR is PXQ. So 3PXQ. We keep our symbol in the middle. Just like for an equation, you keep bringing it down. And then from the green, we also want to subtract QXR. And that's going to give us RXS. So angle RXS. We know we got that by sub subtraction property or by subtracting. But what is step two? When you have an angle congruent to itself, it begins with an R. Close. Reflexive. Good. Step two is the reflexive property. Substitution is when you have two different congruency statements and you're going to then replace an angle with its congruent. But an angle congruent to itself is the reflexive property. Okay? On the back side, uh, see if you can fill in while some are finishing up. Just the conclusion piece. So we already reviewed these theorems last class. So we'll fill out the reasons together. But based on the givens, can you make the conclusion, which is the statement? So for the first one, Whenever you're told you have perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines give you what type of angles? Right angles. So we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Or vice versa. Right angles give you perpendicular lines. So this one would be ray AB, because it doesn't go all the way through and A is our end point is perpendicular to ray AC. The reasons for those, okay, so the reason why perpendicular lines gave us right angles is because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. So that symbol is the right angle symbol. So instead of the lines being at an angle, okay, they are drawn perpendicular with the box. And you can use the symbol if you want or write it out. And then the one underneath, and I realize this says lines, and you can say rays as well. So if two lines or rays intersect to form right angles, then they are perpendicular. This was from yesterday as well. Does anyone know the conclusion for that? given to so the statement that would go to that. So it's telling you that we have um, a linear pair of congruent angles. So 1 and 2 are along the line H, and they are the same measure. They are congruent. So that means their measures are 90, yes. But that's, again, saying the same thing. We don't talk about measurement in terms of a proof. If that happens, then again, like I said, I know each are 90 degrees, and therefore G must be perpendicular to H. The next one, 
if we have two parallel lines to start and L is perpendicular to M, what can you conclude? Yeah. Yes, L is also perpendicular to M. So if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other line. And then lastly, um, we're told that M is perpendicular to P, and then N is perpendicular to P. So that gives us right angles here, which are congruent corresponding angles. So M and N are parallel. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. The proof below is partially filled out, which yours on the quiz is going to be. However, I, don't, I didn't leave the right side all blank. I went back and forth, okay? So this guides you through the process. So take a minute to read through what's given, look at the picture, and then look at their thought process. It's not always the only thought process in a proof, but look at the way that that was done. before, just because uh, proofs are brand new, the format, you have statements on the left, reasons on the right, it's a T-chart with your givens written first. The statement that you're trying to prove is always last. So the first reason would just be that's what's given. Okay. Now, they told us we had perpendicular lines to start. Okay. And that's what we see here. Perpendicular lines, they made the conclusion that you have right angles. Does that make sense? Yeah, because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. So if I look at their QA, so QA perpendicular to QB, we'll do that in red. So here's QA, um, I'm sorry, to QD. So they said 2 is a right angle. And then QB perpendicular to QC. So then one's a right angle. And then they said, because they're right angles, they made the conclusion that they are congruent. Does that make sense? Yeah, because all, just like we say all vertical angles are congruent, all right angles are congruent. OK? Makes sense so far. And then, um, did they make this conclusion based on the right angle being congruent? No. This is a separate conclusion that they made, angle 3 congruent to angle 3. So they threw that in there. We'll see why in a second. But what's the property that states any angle congruent to itself? Reflexive. Good. So reflexive. OK? So why did they do that? Angle 3 is right here in pink, OK? So they wanted to get to AQC. So if I highlight AQC with the highlighter, um, AQC is this one. But what do they do with the 3 and the 2 to get the whole? Or on the other one, AQC, or I'm sorry, um, that was AQC, BQD, what did they do with those two angles to get the whole? Added. They, it got bigger, right? We started with angle one, and then it went to this whole angle, so we must have added. So the property, going back to the pen, they added these two together to get, they added one and three to get BQD, they added two and three to get AQC. So this is the addition property. All right, one last one, and then we're going to finish with a construction. So take a minute to read that one.
All right, so let's mark what's given. FBE, so FBE is this angle right here. That's congruent to EBD, okay? So in looking at that, that's part of each angle that goes on each side of those two lines we want to be perpendicular, okay? So, and then looking at the other one, FBA, so FBA, this one, is congruent to DBC, this one. So in highlighting them in color, we have one orange and one green on each side where the oranges are congruent and the greens are congruent. So if I added this, these two angles and added those two angles, what would be true about these two angles? They're congruent by addition. Okay, so let's add those together. We have to name them with the three letters. The left side would be EBA, congruent to the right side EBC, and that's by the addition property. And on the previous page, it was the third one down. If two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. So we are done. So that's ray BE perpendicular to line AC. Okay? Yep. Good. You've got your book open side by side. It was the third one down. If two lines intersect to form a linear pair, and the lines are perpendicular. Does anyone need the tool for the construction? And the straight edge? All right, so today is the perpendicular line construction. Okay? The difference is going to be with the construction is you're going to be given, remember the postulate, so you're going to be given a line and a point. Now the point can either be on the line or off the line. Okay? So in looking at the first one, we are given point P on AB. So we're going to construct a line perpendicular. And I should move this line up. It really doesn't matter which side we do it on. So let's actually do it above it. Um, but we could do the arc and the x below. So that, that's all this is, is an arc and an x. So you put your compass point always on the point that the line has to go through. And then we're going to draw an arc that intersects the line twice. Again, you could do it above or below. So since we don't have much room below, we're going to do it above. So that gives you two points of intersection right here. Whoops. Let's move the compass off. Right there and right there. Where does that put point P in reference to those two points? Yeah, it even creates a segment right from there to there. Where P is in the middle, it's the midpoint. So we're now going to bisect it. Do you remember the perpendicular bisector construction from yeah. unit one? So you can do um, both X's on each side, but you already have a one point that it goes through. So take your compass now, put the point on that um, point. I'm going to make my radius bigger. So I just moved the compass out. And now we're going to make the X. So the X is formed by, I'm going to move it out a little bit more, two intersecting arcs. Whoops, and I guess I'm going to keep it on the highlighter. So there's one arc, and then here's the other arc. As I said, you can make, you can keep um, and do the whole arc like we bisected below. If you just keep going, but you don't need it. So I'm going to undo that because I already have one of the points that the line needs to go through right there. So I only need, if 
based on unit one, two points determine a straight line. So now take your ruler, I'm going to use the line tool, and we draw a straight line through those two points. Whoops, where'd it go? I'm just going to slide it over. So I usually sketch it by hand. There we go. Does it say we need to label the line? No. <laughs> I thought it did. So construct, yeah, construct PE. So P is already there. So let's just label E right there. It's an arc and an X. So in the last one, now point P is just going to be off the line. But it's the same construction, an arc and an X. So let's do, do we have enough room? Yes, let's do the arc and X below this one this time. So let's put our compass point on P. And we're going to make the arc first. I'm going to move it up. So you just need an arc that intersects the segment twice. So right there and right there. Now I'm going to keep my compass setting the same this time because the arc still should intersect. So now I move it to that point of intersection and I'm going to make the X. So right there, slide it over to this one, make the X and close that out. Draw a straight line through those two points. So from, uh, let's redo that, slide that over. Do we need to label this one? What's this one? Construct PE again. So let's just label this PE. Make sure you have an arrow on both sides because it does say to construct line PE. And that's it.